Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the mail service built into OS X Server. Now, mail is one of those uh, services that has a lot of technical components to it and can cause a lot of uh, issues one way or the other. And so if you're a home user, just to start off, one of the things I usually tell home users is not to hassle with hosting your own mail. Uh, there are a lot of issues that can go into that in terms of whether the mail gets through or not. When your server's down, your mail's down. Uh, there are issues with spam, uh, all kinds of things that make uh, e email re um, administration a little bit difficult. So that's why I usually tell home users not to do it. And in fact, for myself, I don't host my own uh, mail service on my server just for that reason. I, I don't need the hassle. Now, having said that, I know for many of you, you're still going to jump in anyway. And so in doing that, I still want to walk through this tutorial to help you get that set up. Uh, a couple of things to consider, though, when you're looking at mail, especially if you're a home user, and that is, uh, the first thing is, is port 25 blocked or not? Uh, many ISPs will block port 25, and that's the email port, which means that you won't be able to run your own email server. So you really need to find that out first to make sure that you can make it work. Uh, the second thing is, is do you have a static IP address or not? So do you have an IP address that doesn't change? Now, I know with a lot of dynamic IP addresses, they usually don't change that often. But when you're relying on email, uh, if your IP address does change, you don't get any email until you update all of your DNS uh, to be pointing to that new IP address that you just got assigned. So it's probably not a good idea to host a mail server, uh, especially one that you rely on, uh, if you don't have a static IP address. And so again, that's something you'll want to contact your ISP on. The other thing you have to think about is how is your DNS set up? Now, for those of you that are home users, you probably have what's called a split DNS, and that is that your server is handling everything inside your local network, and then you probably have a domain registrar on the outside uh, that's handling all of your DNS in the outside world. And so your name servers usually will still live with your uh, domain provider, uh, where, whereas um, if you don't have that, if you're not uh, using a split DNS and you host your own web server maybe on a co-location um, facility, uh, like Mac Stadium or something like that, uh, then you have a front-facing server and you handle all the primary DNS, which means that your name servers will actually be on your, you will be your own name server, uh, so to speak. And those are your NS1 and NS2 records. So you want to know, uh, you know, kind of how your DNS is set up. And like I said, if you're a home user, you've got a split DNS uh, set up. Uh, which again can cause uh, you know just just a few other issues because uh, you'll probably have to get your um, some of your records like maybe your PTR records and things like that set up through your um, ISP and so again just a few things that you need to consider so you know how to do that so what I'm going to do in this screencast is show you how to set it up is if you're running a split DNS where you're a home user uh, if you want to see how uh, DNS works for a hosted server uh, you can see uh, the screencast that I've done for Mac Stadium uh, on how to set that up uh, for a Mountain Lion server, but it's it's very similar in terms of the setup. And so I'll put a, uh, a link here on the screen. Okay, so here we are over on the mail service. And before we get started actually setting up this service, there's a couple of things that we need to get set up. So let me just show you this. Uh, on your domain provider, I'm just going to pull up a domain provider website here. Uh, this is a, a particular one that I've got here at Hover. Uh, there's a couple of things that you're going to want to set up uh, to make sure that uh, everything works properly with your mail server. You're going to want to go to the DNS service of your domain provider, so whoever that is, and you're going to want to go in and add a couple of records. So we're going to say add new here, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a host name here, and what we're going to do is just put mail on here. You want mail to be in front of whatever your server name is. So in the case of you, let's say you're using uh, server.example.com, uh, for instance, and that's your host name and that's your primary zone, you would have mail.server.example.com is what it would come out to be. Uh, if you just had example.com, then it would be mail.example.com. And again, it all depends on how you're using this. If you're hosting your website outside with a domain provider, then you're going to have to use the server.example.com. I'll show you what that looks like. So you're going to set up a host name for uh, mail. And uh, in this case, it will pick up the, you know, maxscreencaster.com here. Sometimes you'll have to put mail.maxscreencaster.com. It all depends on your domain provider. Here you're going to create an A record. 
And then in the value here, you're going to put in your public IP address, and you're going to save that. Now, because I don't have mine running, I'm not going to save that, but just wanted to show you how that works. Now, we have one more record type that we need to set up here as well, and that would be an MX record right here. And you'll notice that all of a sudden it pops out and gives us a priority, and then the host name over here. And so what we're going to do in here is we'd give it a priority of like 10, which would be the highest. And then here you'd put in your host name, you know, uh, server, you know, dot example dot com, mail dot, that kind of thing. And then you would save that and have those two records saved. Uh, if you want to get an idea of what it looks like, I've got this website over here uh, where he just kind of took a picture of what it looks like on his. See, he's got mail.mydomain.com all set up here for his A record. And then down here he's got his MX record for mail.mydomain.com. Uh, with a priority of 10 uh, set up on this side as well. And you can see my, mydomain.com is his uh, primary zone. So those are the two records you'd want to make sure that you have set up uh, at your domain provider. And then you should be uh, in good shape. Now let me just put this down here. Now once you have that set up, there's uh, one more thing we need to do. And that is we need to come into the DNS here on your server. And we're going to have to add those identical records over here. All right, so we're going to want to make sure we add those. So we're going to hit a plus here, and we're going to add a machine record. And on that machine record, this is where, again, you would put in here mail. You can see how it adds mail in front of this because my primary zone and host name is server.toddoltoff.com. That's what my mail address would look like. Uh, if I had a primary zone of just toddoltoff.com, then that server word wouldn't be there. And then in here, you put in your IP address, which is the, um, the local IP address of your server, and then you would create that record. Again, since I don't have this set up, I'm just going to cancel this. And then you would also come in here and create an MX uh, record, a mail exchanger record, to match what you set up on the host site there. And again, in here, you would still put the same thing, mail.server.toddoltoff.com put in your priority of 10 or whatever you put on your uh, domain provider to match and then you would create that and that way we've got matching records and then your mail service would work. Uh, I'm just going to cancel that again because I'm not using the mail service so uh, I'm just going to let you know that. So now we can talk a little bit about setting up the mail service. One more thing you'll want to do is make sure up here um, you know, for your router, once you have your router, uh, once you have your mail service set up and run, if you have your router attached to server, it will automatically open the ports for you. Uh, if you don't, you need to actually forward the ports on your router. And so I'll have put those ports up here for you, but they're basically TCP 110, 995, 25, 465, 143, 587, and 993. And you'd want to open all of those TCP ports uh, on your router. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look now at the mail service. Now that we've got all the background stuff set up, now we can set up the service itself. So here we are uh, in the mail service. Uh, as we have in every one of our services, uh, we do have this uh, permissions area where you can set up, again, uh, allowing connections for a particular set of users or all users. Uh, you can also set it up for when connecting from all networks, private, or only some networks. And that just gives you some restrictions on how the service works. Uh, again, in most cases, you'll just want to do all users and all network users uh, because you'll be covering mail for everybody. Now, once we've got that, let's come down here to authentication. And so this looks a little different than it did in Yosemite server. They've kind of laid things out a little bit differently here. Uh, with space and all of that, but we've got very similar settings. Uh, the first is our authentication. Uh, it's set to automatic, but we can edit that, and we can set that to whatever type of authentication you want. Uh, it could be open directory if you've got that. Again, open directory is what we set up over here uh, for us on OS X server. Uh, active directory would be a Windows directory uh, that maybe your uh, Mac server is connected to a Windows directory, so you may want to use an active directory authentication. Uh, you can set it for local users or just custom. And again, if you hit custom, then it has all of these various types of authentication, and you could set it for whichever one you want to have uh, on there. Uh, for most uses, it's best just to do automatic and uh, let it take care of it, uh, your, itself. But if you wanted to have some customization, you could do that as well. I'm just going to cancel and leave that alone. Uh, next, we've got push notifications enabled, and we set those up when we set up some of our earlier services and set up push notifications up here in the server app. Uh, again, if you went to settings over here, uh, you can see we've got uh, push notifications. If I just uh, check on this, it would give push notifications for everything. Uh, but we set those up when we set up our other service uh, before. So let's go ahead and come back into mail. So we've got that all enabled and set up. If it's not enabled, you'll want to go ahead and uh, click the button here to edit that. And it's going to ask for your Apple ID uh, to set up those uh, push notifications. 
Now, here we've got filtering, and this is where we do the virus and junk filtering. And this is what I said earlier that can be difficult about mail is dealing with your viruses and your junk mail and monitoring it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but there are settings that we can set up here for filtering. If I just click on this for a minute, uh, I can check to enable virus filtering, which I would definitely recommend because you want to make sure it's removing any emails that have viruses in them. Uh, you can also enable blacklist filtering, and uh, this is important too. I would definitely check this because what this does is it uh, accesses this zenspamhouse.org, which is a basically a clearinghouse for all kinds of known spammers. So that what will happen is anybody that's on their spam list, email-wise, that email will just get deleted so that you don't have to mess with it. So it's almost like blacklisting or keeping those junk mails out of your server. And so that's a good one to do. You, you could add a different uh, blacklist server over here as well, but this is a, a really common one and uh, stays up to date and is a good one to use. So I definitely would enable that uh, in your process. Now, we also have enabled gray list filtering. Now, what this does, and this used to be on by default and caused a lot of problems for people, is what this will do is this will send out your email for the first time to somebody, uh, or actually somebody who's sending an email to you, uh, it's going to block them the first time they send it. It's kind of a way of making sure it's the person that you want and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but then what will happen is, is most legitimate people would send it a second time, and then the second time it comes, it would let it through. And that's one way of kind of monitoring that and making sure that you're not just getting junk. Again, I tend to leave this uh, unchecked because it can cause a hassle up front, especially if someone doesn't send something back. Uh, it's just a way to kind of monitor this, but I think with the blacklisting and some of these other things, you should be okay. And then finally, you can enable junk mail filtering and then determine uh, how aggressive, uh, moderate, or cautious you want to be in terms of what you want to have uh, set out, right? So the least tolerant is aggressive, most tolerant is cautious. In other words, if you want to let everything in, you go to cautious. If you want to be aggressive in your uh, junk mail filtering, you go more towards aggressive and let it do it itself for you. So you can play with this depending on what you see happening. If you find out there's a lot of emails that aren't getting through that you want, uh, you just come in here and move this slider down and it'll adjust it for you. Okay, so you can set all those things up and say, okay, I'm just going to cancel here because I'm not setting it up. Now, we also have a ma uh, mail relay, and this is where you have an ISP that wants you to uh, relay um, all outgoing messages through their server because they want to make sure that they're not tagged as a spam server. So they want to be able to monitor kind of what goes through their server so that someone's not just setting up a email client uh, for the on their ISP and then just blitzing people and causing all kinds of problems. So what will happen is if I just check this, you'll be asked to uh, put in here an email relay um, you know uh, address that they'll give you. And so whatever your ISP gives you, you put that in there. And then you can check this SMTP relay authentication, which will then uh, you'll put in a username and password that they give you to make that work. So again, I'm just going to leave this alone. But if you have that situation, that's how you set that up. Let's go ahead and cancel that. OK, now the other thing we can do is limit email size uh, to a certain uh, size limit per user. So that if you don't want to take up a lot of space on your server storing old emails and stuff like that, uh, you put a size limit on there and then your users have to delete email before more mail will come in. And it's just kind of a nice way to make sure people aren't using uh, your server as storage for their emails. Uh, again, I'll just uh, leave that alone. But you can set that to whatever you want by megabytes. Again, remember 1,000 megabytes on here would be a gig. Now you can also set up domains here uh, for email addresses. And so if you wanted to uh, kind of manage your email addresses in here, you could do that. Uh, so if I did, you know, like uh, server.toddletoff.com on here and uh, set that up, I could uh, make that work. And then in here, I can go and add members to that. You know, if I added myself, so there's myself right there. I can put myself in there, and you can see it'll set me up with my own uh, email server, uh, email address. And I can manage the email addresses then right inside the mail service, which is nice. And I can also delete them from here just by clicking that, and then it's gone. So it just gives it a, a little added feature for you to be able to create your emails within the email um, service itself as opposed to going to each individual user and putting in those email addresses. Uh, so go ahead and cancel. So it's just kind of a nice way of managing those things. Now, once you're done with all these setups, you just throw the switch and the service is live. And then you'll want to go into your uh, mail client and uh, just uh, set up your email server. Uh, you can do it the same way we've been talking about with system preferences by going in and just checking the box there. Or you could go into your mail client and do it by add an account and then just follow the steps that way. 
So that's all I have on mail server. Uh, hopefully you understand how this works. Uh, again, mail can be a technical thing, so you'll have to play with it. Sometimes you'll have things that will block, or maybe you don't have the ports open or something. Uh, sometimes your ISP blocks that stuff, so maybe you can't do it anyway. But at least now you'll know how to set it up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.